my heart went Good morning. Welcome to a new discussion in engineering mathematics. For this time, we are going to discuss about determinants. For this PowerPoint presentation, we'll have an introduction on determinants and then the different properties that affect values while we are obtaining determinants. And the third one would be the different methods that we may evaluate determinants. Specifically, this presentation will only cover four types of methods, and those are the Leibniz formula, Sarus method or the rule of Sarus, Laplace cofactor expansion, and lastly, the pivotal method or the pivotal element method. For our introduction, so a determinant is defined to be a scalar value Yan. So nakalagay dito, this is a scalar value which means it doesn't bear directions. It will not um, suggest directions of magnitudes to us and may, may only be obtained from square matrices. So ibig sabihin, yun yung limitation ng determinant natin. If the matrix is not square, then the determinant doesn't exist or simply it is undefined. So, as of now, as of my reading, I think, I think, wala pang formula or wala pang theorem na nabubuo for irregular matrix or rectangular matrix. So, marami kasing researches, ba? But, parang wala pang nag-succeed. Okay? Pero malay natin, if you're very interested on mathematics, you can pursue a profession on math after yung maging engineer. And then, if Maalala nyo ulit ito, you can dig into this. Baka kayo yung makaka-discover how we can solve for determinants of rectangles. Ano? For the notation, ayun. So, an absolute value will um, indicate obtaining the determinant of the matrix. So, kaya sinabi ko in the introduction of matrices, yung matrix natin, you can enclose them in parentheses, box brackets, or braces. In other references, they allow it. Wag lang absolute value because the absolute value will indicate obtaining um, the determinant. So, if you have a matrix A, you malalaman mo na we're obtaining its determinant because of its representation as absolute of A. Or it can be the dit, dit of A or determinant of A in parentheses to mean matrix. Or simply dit A without the parentheses. Okay, the application, so determinants are used to identify scaling factors in linear transformations of 2D and 3D spaces. So, if you have, um, for example, a 2D space, an XY axis, diba? If you have an original XY axis and then your plane figure is positioned in this XY axis we're in, yung scale yung scaling natin sa x direction and y direction direction are changed depending on the indication in the matrix ano daw ba yung magiging effect kapag change natin yung scale anong magiging effect niya kung 2D space yon dun sa area ng figure natin so halimbawa you're solving for the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix tas lumabas ang sagot niya ay determinant is equivalent to 2, ibig sabihin na doble yung area. When we change the scaling of the x and y directions, for example, naging doble, lumaki lalo yung um, plane figure natin. Kung 3D surface naman, or kung 3D plane naman yung meron ka, or 3D axis yung meron ka, let's say, x, y, z directions, or i, j, k, which you encounter in mechanics, di ba? If there are changes applied on the I or J or K direction, ano daw ba yung magiging effect ng scale change dun sa kung 3D naman, volume naman ng ating figure. So kung halimbawa lumabas na ang determinant mo ay ano, um, one third, kung ang determinant mo ay one third, ibig sabihin, nahate by thirds yung ating, by a third, nahati by a third, yung volume ng ating plane figure. So this kinds of notion are used or the determinant are used 
in vector calculus, linear algebra, analytic geometry, and others whose practical applications are evident in engineering. So you've encountered them in mechanics, I guess. And then I think you've encountered them in electromagnetics also, which is just like vector calculus. So in the future, I'll be encountering them speci specifically in power systems. So majority of our buses and networks for power systems are solved using matrices. Okay, let's move on to the different properties of determinants. So why is it important for us to understand the properties? Number one, if you are well-versed with the properties, we can use it to, ad to our advantage because the properties make it easier for us to solve for the determinants. Number two, kung keen observer ka, may mga properties si determinant we're in, you do not need to solve for the value since automatic may sagot na siya. So we can use these properties to our advantage para madali ang tayo sa pagsosolve. Lalo na kapag masyadong malaki yung size or order ng matrix natin, pag kinuhanan mo siya ng determinant, napaka mataluti ng mga proseso dun sa methods that we have. So what are these properties? The first property is, if the two columns or rows of a determinant are identical, the value of the determinant is zero. So kung very keen observer ka talaga at napansin mo kagad that you have two rows or two columns whose elements or entries are identical, then automatic zero na agad yung matrix. Hindi mo na kailangang mag-abala pa ng pagsosolve. Masyadong maproseso din yun, ano? So, in this particular example, you have um, the first row, which is identical to the the first column, sorry, the first column identical to the third column. And then, for this to be considered a property, dapat po yung rows, row, row entries natin, dapat parehas, ha? So, as you can see, first row ng two columns mo ay 1, then second row is negative 4, then third row is 6. If one of this entry change in sign, automatic hindi na zero, mag-iiba yung value ng determinant natin, okay? Second property, if each element of a row or a column of a determinant is multiplied by any number k, the determinant is also multiplied by k. Or sabihin natin, pwede daw tayong mag-factor out, parang ganun, doon natin kuhanin yung idea. If you have a matrix and then you noticed a common factor on one row, or one column, tatandaan isa lang po ha, hindi pwedeng lahat ang pagpa-factor out. So, tingnan natin tong um, determinant natin in the middle. You have the first row, 6, negative 8, 4. The second row, negative 1, 5, 0. And the third row, 2, 6, 7. Mapapansin natin na yung first row natin are all multiples of 2. So, if you try to factor that out on the first row lang, you'll get a 2 on, you'll get 2 factored out and multiplied to the resulting determinant, which is now 3, negative 4, 2, negative 1, 5, 0, and 2, 6, 7. So as you can notice, there were no change on the second and third row. Ngayon, pag kinuhanan mo ng determinant itong, dalawang ito, they will just bear the same answer. So, sa madalit sabi, pwede tayong mag-factor out ng common factor, pero when we factor out, we factor out from one row lang or one column. This is different from our matrix, na alala nyo. Diba kapag matrix siya, dun sa scalar multiplication to a matrix, kapag nagmumultiply tayo ng scalar, Doon sa matrix natin, yung scalar value natin, namumultiply siya on all entries in the matrix. Pero, kapag po determinant ang pinag-uusapan natin, and you want to distribute a scalar inside an, a determinant or an absolute value sa isang row or sa isang column mo lang siya multiply. Thus, kung titingnan mo tong isang example pa sa kanan, sa rightmost, yung scalar value to mo, dito naman siya multiply on the third column. Yan. So, maalin sa dalawa, you can use this, you can use this, depending on your preference. Pero, if I were you, di ba, hindi ako mag ano, hindi ako mag distribute I'll always factor out para mas maliit yung digits. Di ba ito? Mas maliit yung digits. If the digits are smaller, it will be easier to multiply or add. Okay? 
So, tandaan nyo na, magkaiba po yung scalar multiplication ng determinant and matrix. Next. So, the third property is, if any of two rows or columns of a determinant are interchanged, the sign of the determinant is changed. So, kung may napansin ka na, kung may napansin ka that you have two, if you notice that you have two matrices and napansin mo na nagkapalit lang naman yung dalawang columns nila or yung dalawang rows nila, if you try to obtain the determinant of one matrix, paltan mo lang ang sign nun, yun na rin ang determinant ng matrix mo na nagkapalit ang rows or columns. Okay, or minsan kasi, um, it is an advantage to us kapag nagpapalit tayo ng, kapag nagpapalit tayo ng rows and columns when we use the matrices on or the determinants on other on other top, topics like Gaussian elimination or row reductions or elementary operations mas madaling mag-solve minsan if the matrix allows or depende sa given kung magpapalit tayo so ang tatandaan nyo lang pag nagpalit yung dalawang rows or yung dalawang columns magpapalit lang ng sign yung magkaiba lang ng sign yung kanilang determinant so in our uh, first matrix here, you have 1, negative 2, 3 for the, for the first column. And the, sen the second column is 4, 5, negative 6. The third column is 7, 8, 9. If you're going to look at the second matrix, ito yun. Diba? Nagpalit yung first, tsaka second column na. Nung ating first matrix. So, ang ginawa lang, if you try to interchange the row, uh, the columns, make sure to indicate a negative sign, which means it's just equal to the original determinant given. Okay? So, for this third matrix that is given to us, ano sa tingin nyo ang nagpalit? So, ang nagpalit dito ay eto. Okay? First and third rows. But still, the presence of a negative sign indicates equal pa rin siya dun sa first determinant natin. Number four, if each element of a row or a column of a determinant is expressed as the sum of two or more numbers, the determinant may be written as the sum of two or more determinants. So, um, ganito. Pabalik natin i-interpret. Okay, so dito tayo sa kanan magsimula. As you can see, you have two determinants here. Determinant 1 and determinant 2 has identical first and third columns, di ba? Ito at ito are, are identical on the two matrices. And then you notice, ang difference nila, nasa second column lang. So if that is the case, and you're adding, if you are adding the determinants, pwede mo daw tong i-represent into one determinant na lang. So instead of solving two different determinants and then adding their answers, pwede kang mag- um, proceed with, with an operation that will lessen the number of determinants. Ibig sabihin, isang basis ka na lang kukuha ng determinant. Ang gagawin mo lang is, ayun, retain the identical, retain the identical columns or rows, and then simply um, apply the operation on the unique columns or rows. Ang nangyari dito, si second columns natin pinag-add. So, you have negative 9 plus 2, that's negative 7. 4 plus 0, that's 4. And then, 8 negative 2, you get 6. So, this is just the sum of the yun, two columns, two unique columns that we have on the two determinants. So, instead of solving it using the sum of two determinants, you can use one determinant na lang for that. Okay? Next. Next property, number five, if the elements of any row or column of a determinant is added k times the corresponding element of any other row or column, the value of the determinant is unchanged. Yan. Ito medyo hindi natin, hindi madaling mapansin. Diba? Hindi mahirap itong i-identify or it's not that easily obvious for us to identify that this kind of property will exist in the matrix that is given to us. Ano? So, ano bang ibig sabihin nun? Halimbawa, based on this example, halimbawa daw, 
yung isang column mo, let's say ito, dito sa example natin, yun yung 961 natin. Halimbawa daw, itong column na to ay added, dinagdagan, ng scalar times. Halimbawa, 2 times, 3 times, 4 times. So, k times, the corresponding element, ng kahit anong row or column din, yung value daw ng determinant, hindi mag babago. So, anong nangyari dito? Itong second column po natin, that's 9, 6, and 1, dinagdagan, kaya nga added, k times, ng 3 times, corresponding element, ang pinili niya ay, as you can see, third column, ba So, itong second column mo, dinagdagan ng 3 times ng third column. Kaya, anong nangyari? The second column is 9 plus 3 times ng third, that's negative 3, Yung second row is 6 plus 3 times ng third column, negative 2. And 1 plus 3 times yung third column, 5. It will result to this matrix, which is 1, 0, negative 3, 4, 0, negative 2, negative 3, 16, 5. So, kung mapapansin mo yan, yung change na yan, ibig sabihin, this, um, the determinant of this matrix is just the same sa determinant ng matrix na to. Pero imagine, ano, if these two matrices are given to you side by side, will it be able, will you be able to notice that a certain property was used to simplify? Kasi, kapag ito ang determinant mo, mas madali itong kuha na ng determinant because of the presence of zero entries. Diba? Ang problema lang, if they're placed side by side, siguro it will not be easy for us to identify, lalo na kapag hindi, um, hindi whole numbers yung given sa atin. Okay? Number six. So, if one element is proportional to another element, then the determinant is zero. So, proportional. Ibig sabihin, um, a certain factor is used and multiplied to one row or column, and that results to the values of another row or column. So, as you can see here, alin ba yung sinasabing proportional dito? So, ang sinasabing proportional po dito ay, let me get my highlighter. Ito po. Yan. So, yung first and second rows natin are... Nako, ayan ako dun sa aking yan. Ang creepy. Okay, so yung first and second rows po natin are proportional to each other. If you try to multiply by 2, yung ating second row, you'll get the first row. ba 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. 6 times 2. Ah, 3 times 2 is 6. 4 could be the other, eight, other way around. Yung first row mo, if you try to divide it by 2, you'll get the second row. Or pwede nating sabihin... 0 ang determinant nito kasi this may fall, ito ba? This may fall under second property, yung um, scalar multiplication to determinant. So, pwede mong i-factor out dito si 2 sa first row. Kapag tinry mong i-factor out si 2 sa first row, you'll get 2 times. So, you'll get 1, 2, 3 na lang. And then for the second row, that's 1, 2, 3 ulit. And then for the thir third row, you have 353. Three, three, three. Papasok ngayon yung second property natin of having identical rows. Ah, sorry. First property. Identical rows or columns. Diba zero yun? So if this determinant is zero, multiply it by two. You'll get a zero determinant for your answer.